In this project, we will simulate the fluid flow around a wavy tape in a tube. The present study investigates the fluid flow passing through a circular cross-section tube using a wavy tape as a barrier. This waveform acts as a thermal insulator, and the purpose of the present study is to investigate the heat transfer inside the tube. The present 3D model was designed by Design Modeler Software. The geometry of the model is a circular cross-section tube having barriers in the form of a wavy bar. Due to the symmetry of the model, the desired geometry is designed as a semi-cylinder. The meshing of the present model is done using ANSYS meshing software, and the mesh that used in this geometry is unstructured. The element number is equal to 653,307. Under the general setup tab, you can see different buttons from scales to units. By clicking on the scale, a new window will appear showing you the dominant extents of your geometry. Also, under the view length, view length unit section, you can see the default geometry units, which is meter in this project. Also, under the scaling section, uh, uh, under the mesh was created in, you can change the settings. Uh, in order to activate the scaling factors beneath that. For example, your geometry and mesh was is designed in a software which uh, its default unit was millimeter. By activating these scaling factors, you can change this factor to your desired factors in order to set the length to the appropriate unit. By clicking on check button, uh, you will see that under the console tab, the Fluid software will start to check your mesh for any errors. Uh, also by clicking on Report Quality, again in the Console tab, the Fluid software will, uh, will give you the quality report for your mesh. For example, you can see the maximum aspect ratio of your mesh, uh, maximum orthogonal quality, and etc. By clicking on Display button, a new window will appear, which you can see different part, parts of your geometry. Now in the appear window, which shows you the names of the different parts of your geometry, you can click and select each part and then click on display uh, so that the software will show you that part. Now there are several assumptions taken into account for this project. First, the type of our solver is defined to be pressure based since we are dealing with incompressible flows. As for the velocity formulation, we have selected the absolute format. And as for the time study, we have selected the steady time study since we didn't want our results to be a function of time. After double clicking on the energy button in the appeared box, you can see that we have enabled the energy equations since we wanted to calculate the temperature changes and temperature distribution inside our computational domain. Also, if you double click on the viscous button in the appeared window, you can see that we have enabled the laminar model since the fluid flow passing through our tube does not have a high velocity. Now, if you expand the fluid under the material section, you can see that water liquid material has been added to the software. Now if you double click on the water liquid material in the appeared window under the properties, you can see that for different parameters related to the properties of water liquid, polynomial functions are defined. Now if you click on any of those edit button for different parameters in the appeared window, you can see that for example the density here is defined in the terms of temperature with three coefficients. It should also be pointed out that uh, polynomial functions and their coefficients are taken from this equation. Also, if you intend to add another material, all you have to do is to click on Fluent Database and select another material from the available list of materials in the Fluent software. Now, in order to introduce the water liquid material into our computational domain, all you have to do is to double click on the flow zone under the cells and condition, and then in front of the material name section, change it from air to water liquid.
Now, if you click on the inlet boundary, you can see that the type of this boundary is defined to be velocity inlet. By clicking on edit, a new window will appear in which you can change the settings for this boundary. For example, in the appeared window under the momentum tab, you can see that the velocity magnitude uh, defined for the water liquid to enter this boundary is, as you can see here. Also, if you click on the thermal tab, you can see the temperature of the water liquid. Now, by clicking on the outlet boundary, the type of this boundary is defined to be pressure outlet. Again, by clicking on edit, a new window will appear. In the appeared window, the most important part you should pay attention to is the gauge pressure, which is here defined to be equal to zero, which means that our water liquid will exit our computational domain to the atmosphere. Now, if you click on this wall boundary under the momentum tab, you can see that the stationary wall motion along with no slip shear condition are defined for this wall. Also, if you click on the thermal tab, you can see that under the thermal condition, the temperature condition is defined for this wall, and the value of temperature fixed on this wall is equal to 360 Kelvin. Now, if you click on this wall boundary under the momentum tab, you can see that the stationary wall motion along with no slip shear condition are defined for this wall. And if you click on the thermal tab for this wall, you can see that the thermal condition of heat flux here is defined. And here you can see that the value of the heat flux applied on this wall is equal to zero, which means that this wall is adiabatic. After double clicking on the method, you will see that a new window will appear showing you the pressure velocity coupling. Also, you, will, you can see that uh, the spatial discretization methods are shown in this window. Also, you can change the discretization into other formats, like you can change them into first order advent and the other options available for each variable under their combo list. And for the simple pressure velocity coupling, uh, the simple algorithm is kind of an iterative solver which uses a relationship between velocity and pressure correction to enforce mass conservation and to obtain the pressure field. After double clicking on the controls button, in the middle section of the software window, you can see that new part will appear. In the appear part, you can see under relaxation factors for different parameters. Now these values are set here by the software automatically. You can change these values which are between 0 and 1 by yourself for different projects you do. But it is highly recommended that you do not do that since it may result in divergence. There are two ways to check that your uh, simulation process have reached convergence. Alongside the checking the residuals or reaching and nearing the zero, you may define some report to make sure that an equation have reached convergence. For example, by just right clicking on the report definition, going on the new, you are able to choose between different reports. For example, you can define a mass flow rate report on a arbitrary boundary based on your geometry and your simulation. You are able to see whether this mass flow has reached a constant value or not. If yes, it may be a sign that your simulation has reached convergence, but the residual must be checked as well. After double clicking on the residuals button, a new window will appear. In the appear window, you can see the absolute criteria for equations like continuity, x velocity, y velocity, and so on. Now, when you set the software to start the simulation, there would be error between each iteration. Now, if that error is less than this criterion, uh, it conveys the meaning that uh, that equation has reached convergence. After double clicking on the initialization button, a new window will appear showing you different methods of initialization, hybrid and standard. Now, in the standard initialization method, you get to choose the first amounts and values for the first iteration of the simulation progress. These values refers to the values used in the first iteration of the simulation progress and if you choose the values for each parameter wisely, your simulation progress will finish sooner. It should be mentioned that you can also choose the first values and in, or the initial values by just clicking on the compute from drop down list and clicking on one boundary. For example, by clicking on compute from all zones, 
the software will automatically average the values in different zones and boundaries and put those values in the initial values for the software. After double clicking on the wrong calculations button in the appeared section under the parameters part by just defining the number of iterations and then clicking on calculate button, the software will start the simulation process. Now in this part, we have extracted 3D and 2D contours by the means of CFD post software. Now in order to extract a 3D contour, we click on volume rendering button and accept the appeared window. After that, on the low left side of the software window, in the appeared part, in front of variable section, we select our desired variable, which in this slide we are going to select velocity. After that, we click on apply so that the software will show us the 3D contour. Now in this 3D contour, you can easily see the velocity distribution inside our tube. Uh, you can easily observe that in the places where the wavy tape has its own peaks, the value for the velocity has increased due to the changes in surface cross-section of the tube. Now in order to extract the streamlines, all you have to do is to click on the streamlines button and accept the appeared window. After that, just like the previous slide, on the low left side of the software window, in front of the start from section, we select the inlet boundary. After that, we click on apply and the software will show us the streamlines. Now in this streamline contour, you can easily see the wavy tape has the responsibility of mixing the flow in order to increase the heat transfer rate. And finally, in order to extract a 2D contour, we click on contour button and accept the appeared window. After that, in front of the location, we select the symmetry boundary in order to see the temperature distribution in the middle section of our cube. After that, we click on apply. Now in this 2D temperature contour, you can easily see that as the water liquid passed through the tube, its temperature increases. Finally, a summary of different settings and setup that we have used in our project is presented to you in the slide. To benefit from Master CFD services, including simulation, consultation, and training, contact our experts via info at mrcfd.com.